How's it going, everybody? Welcome back, and let's talk about form actions in SvelteKit. These are super useful. It's really gonna help you maintain your application. And because there's a lot of moving parts in this video, I'm gonna be using the absolute minimum examples possible, right? Absolute bare bones so that we can focus on syntax, ideas, concepts, and techniques, all right? So let's start off with two reasons why you want to use form actions over kind of the typical, you know, API endpoint. So the first thing is you're not going to have to maintain an endpoint and then authenticate it. And there's just so much more moving parts when you are using, you know, a public endpoint like this. All right. And the second reason, which I think is equally as important, is that you're going to be able to co-locate your behavior with the form itself. Right. So all of the code is going to kind of is going to live together, which is, you know, going to make things more maintainable and it's just going to make everything more easy to understand. And so now that we have kind of those two points out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into our example here. So as you see, we have a form, right? Bare bones, basically just an input. You can get a little label here and a button. All right. And we have method post and that's really all we need. Now, if we go over to our plus page dot server dot TS file, which is really what we're trying to do here, right? These actions allow you to do something on the server with the data that has been submitted. All right. And so since we only have one, we get to name that default, right? And we don't need to come in here and, you know, put, uh, oops, I think I got rid of. A quote there. There we go. You don't need to put an action and that's going to be for named actions like we're going to talk about in a second. And so once again, we're using default and we're doing the absolute minimum here. Okay. So what's really cool is that we receive the data as form data, which is great. We're just kind of picking out name, right? Because that's what we named it right here. Okay. And then we're just printing it out and we're returning something. And we're going to talk about uh, this right here in a second. So just give me some time on that. So let's just try to get this to print out. Let's go to our page here. I'm going to say Hunter. Okay, here we are. And as you see, received name Hunter. Okay, perfect. Now, let's uh, go ahead and talk about named actions. And so a lot of times you're going to have more than one form on here and or on your page, I should say, and that's going to require multiple actions. All right. Now what we can do here is we can say action and actually before we complete that, let's go ahead and make our actions. I think that'd be a little bit better of a, a process for us. And so I'm going to name this create and let me just go ahead and copy this. And we'll say delete. Okay, we're just going to kind of mock up these actions here. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a couple different things. And I'm just going to say in delete, and we're going to do the same thing here. In create, and same thing. In create, and in delete. Oops, there we go. Let me... In delete. Okay. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and apply that action. So we are going to first start off with that question mark, right? This is just a parameter at the end of the day. And then we are going to say create just like that. Okay. Perfect. And let's just kind of review this. We have create, we have delete. So we can add as many of these as we want because they're named. And I'm going to go ahead and say, Hunter, let's submit that. And great, we're in create, which is cool. So everything is still working. We're just not working with that default because of not just one. Okay. And just to kind of prove the point here, let's just go ahead and say, delete. Okay. And we're going to say, Hunter. So if you want to use multiple forms, you can go right ahead. And as you see, we're hitting that different action. Okay. So now that we have that, let's talk about using the form prop, which is interesting. So we're going to say let, and this is, you know, normally where you'd say data, right? To get that data from that load function. We don't have this, you know, because we're trying to keep this example as minimal as possible, but we can have a form prop, which is interesting. So I'm going to use that prop room, right? Because we're obviously using Svelte 5 here. 
Oops, forgot that equal sign. Goodness. There we go. And there, there we go. Um, and this is going to allow us to access that form data, which is awesome. And so I'm just right off the bat, I'm just going to use the inspect rune, right? This only runs in development, which is really cool. And it just allows us to, you know, print this out whenever form changes. Okay. So now that I have this, I'm going to say Hunter. Okay. And there you go. You see that we're getting back what we returned in that action in the form prop. So that's really cool. So if you need to do anything in this scope, you are completely covered. Okay. And let's actually take advantage of that. And let's take a look at, you know, what we're returning. And we can look at that inside. Um, cause I, we're still using delete. We can see what we're returning. So we're returning result and let's go ahead and get some UI on the board, uh, that uses this. So how about if form dot result? Okay. Nice. And let's just go ahead and make a P tag and we're just going to render out form dot result. Okay. Just like that. So let me go ahead and close this out here and then we'll be all set. Okay. So we're really going to be taking um, advantage of this prop here and boom, right? Great. It already, uh, let's just say John, let's try to do something different. Okay, great. And so we can really, you know, base our UI or update our UI based on this form using that prop here, which is awesome. Okay. So now that we've talked all about that, there's something I really want you to kind of hone in on here. And so take a look at this right here. Okay. Look at that little favicon. I'm just going to, you know, throw something in here and you're going to see that it's updating. Okay. It's, it's refreshing the page and we don't necessarily want that, right? We can even say like Jill and it's refreshing the page. We don't want to refresh the page. And that is where enhance is going to come in. So we're going to use enhance. Okay. And we got to import that from dollar sign app slash forms. And one of the first things we're going to do here, right? This is for, you know, progressive enhancement. And if I just say Jack, you're going to see it did not reload the page. So we get that kind of prevent default right, right out of the gate. Now, if we go over to the docs here, you're going to see that we have access to, you know, the form data itself. So if you want to kind of work or, or massage that data in a sense, you can go ahead and do that. You can do whatever you want here. You can even cancel the submission, which is great. You know, uh, calling cancel, right? This invocation will prevent the submission. You can do a ton of stuff here, which is awesome. You know, you even have access to that, you know, result, like whatever you return, uh, which is awesome. And yeah, you can just kind of pass in a function here and do whatever you need to do. So I know this may have been kind of a lot to kind of digest, but I think we kind of really reduced the noise here in this video um, with kind of a minimal example. And so, you know, as kind of a summary, this is going to allow us to not have to maintain an API route and have all of our code right inside the route itself, which is going to be really, really useful. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.